Hail, hail, the Celts are here, and Brendan Rogers is back in town. And guys, honestly, I'm really head over heels for all this at the moment after being there and hearing it from the horse's mouth. I said on a few podcasts and a few streams that for a long time, I knew I would be able to accept him back quite quickly, but there would be a wee, a wee dark spot in there of unfinished business, and it's still there, don't get me wrong, but man, do I believe we are going to go on and have a a really special period in the club's history. The squad has never been so good. We're quite confident we've got a healthy transfer kitty, a very motivated board, a very motivated manager, and a very motivated squad going straight into the Champions League group stages. And I'm just back from the press conference. I hope you've enjoyed all the footage and all the content we managed to capture around it. And I'm just itching. I just want to go and get players for Celtic right now with the 30, 35 million based on the current standing in the squad with my kind of sentiment, the kind of takeaway feeling I got from listening to Brendan Rodgers' press conference yesterday and then obviously listening to all the official stuff that came out afterwards as well. At any point in the video, if you laugh, you learn, you like something or whatever, please do like and subscribe to the channel, share and retweet and all that good stuff. And let's just get stuck into it. And I think we'll start with the elephant in the room, which is goalkeeper. Now, I don't know what the club's plan or strategy is going to be, but I'm going to go on the assumption that Joe Hart is the stated number one right now and any high-quality addition we could bring in would be in a passing-of-the-guard kind of seasonal situation. Now, goalkeepers and good goalkeepers are very hard to find nowadays and very expensive. So there needs to be some give and take on the profile of goalkeeper we're looking to bring in. I've heard people mention relentlessly everywhere I go the backup guy at Liverpool which just is not for me at all a number two goalkeeper who's not got any you know number one real track record building up it, you know it, it just doesn't it just doesn't always sit well with me for a Celtic goalkeeper we want a number one we want a clear guy that has been doing the job knows the job and has room to improve and when you look across statistics and wage bills and transfer fees and transfer valuations it doesn't look like there's very many options out there, particularly around Europe. But like the manager said... What I also understand is that what sometimes analysis doesn't give you, it doesn't tell you whether someone has a heart or whether they have technique. And these are things that you need in football. You know, because you can be technically really good, but if you don't have the heart for football, then you're not going to, especially a club like this here. We need a holy goalie. We need a new guy to come in and really make that position his own. It's been a long time. Because we've got Joe Hart at quite clearly at the end of his career, similar to Craig Gordon pre previous to him, and Fraser Foster was always kind of one foot in the door, one foot out. We've never had like a real stable, that's our goalkeeper for a real proper length of time with any confidence. So having Joe Hart for this year with somebody else who's quite clearly going to pick up uh, the mantle from him and can contribute when needed this season especially. But the transfer budget we've got shouldn't be overlooked for me. And as I look about European football, the only person I can see as a good holy goalie candidate is the St. Pauli number one, Nicola Vassil. Now, this guy's a goalkeeper. I can tell you statistics about him and you can go and watch highlights. He's a goalkeeper. He's a very good goalkeeper. He is a leader in the defence. He's a real personality. He makes some really important saves and he was a huge part of a really good St. Pauli team, by the way. There's other players in that team that you might want to be in consideration as well, by the way. But Nicola Vassil is definitely the number one for me. He's been playing in Bundesliga too, so... Having somebody like Joe Hart as a mentor is a fantastic situation because he's in Bundesliga 2 as well. It shouldn't cost anything too mega. And at 27 years of age, there's a lot of room for growth in a guy like this as well. Now, from Brendan Rodgers' words himself, I am quite confident that he can play Greg Taylor in a really effective role so we can get the sort of Greg Taylor we've been used to in terms of the inverted fullbacks and the different shapes that you're trying to create on the pitch when in attack, when in possession. But I do still have this thing in the back of my head that somehow a left back is now all of a sudden on the menu. I can't quite shake it. Everyone's telling me centre back. And as we know, versatility is something that's always pretty important. And because Yuki Kobayashi, quite clearly to this point, has not worked out very well. His status in the squad is by no means secure. I do feel that some sort of left centre back come left back type of player is firmly on the menu for this transfer window. And the number one candidate for me, I'm so surprised he's not transferred to anybody over the last two windows, and that is John Tolkien at the New York Red Bulls. Now, before you bite my head off about MLS or whatever, the manager did say... What, what there is now is a real clarity. That's the biggest thing, you know, around it. 
for me, I know that, okay, I might not be able to buy a 20 million pound player. No. And, uh, but, we can get really good players. And I think, as I said, there's a, there's a structure in place now that uh, brings us into markets <coughs> that were, were on top before. Obviously, Mark Hines through working there, but Mark in his, um, in his previous role, they dealt with Manchester City, uh, had overseen all those markets. So he has uh, a great knowledge of them, and, uh, and that's something that will continue. And we got Alistair Johnson, very good, high quality defender from the MLS, as you know. And I'm telling you, if Alistair Johnson can play like this for Celtic, John Tolkien can be a very good player for Celtic as well. The guy is a real athlete. He can play centre midfield. He can play left wing back and a back, you know, in a 3 5 2. He can play left back and play centre back and play centre back in a back four and play centre back in a back three. He's got an array of crazy haircuts. He has a bit of a character. He has a bit of a leader on the pitch. He is not shy of getting stuck into it. And he can score goals. He is like, he's a quality player. I'm a really big fan of him. And at 20 years of age, he's begging for a move to Europe. And again, if we've got the sort of transfer budget I think we do, picking up somebody like John Tolkien for like 4 million quid could be a huge defensive upgrade. Now, what we've seen quite clearly with Rio Hitati and Matoma is that we can clearly identify the source of where some high quality players come from. And if you look at Brighton, they're looking to sell guys like Cassiedo, they've already sold Cucurella, they've just sold Alexis McAllister, they're starting to churn all these players out. One of the places they're finding some of these players is in the second divisions of France and Germany and whatever. We, we would like some more power in the team, and, um, but technically very good. Tactically play the game to a really good level. And if we want to add power, into our midfield. One of the best sources, one of the best academies in European world football is Sochaux. And they have got a diamond coming through at the moment. And his name is Skelly Alvero. Now, who knows where he's going to go? But I can tell you this, wherever he does go, it's going to be really fun to watch. And if we've got this kind of war chest and this is the section of the, the food chain that we're trying to get ourselves into, then he should be one of the top guys on the hit list for me. One team that's in financial distress at the moment is Leon. They are having to shed players left and right. Moussa Dembele is a free agent. I know you're going to shout that. Not him. I would love it to be Cherky, but I think he's going to end up with somewhere like PSG. But for me, I would love to see us interested in somebody like Bradley Barcola, who's really just broke out of the Leon Academy into the first team over the last 12 months or so. Leon's Academy's produced some fantastic players. You don't need me to tell you that. And in uh, the France Under-21 setup, he's doing pretty well as well. We've had great success with guys like Barcola and the, uh, Edward and Dembele. With us being in the Champions League group stages, he could be an exciting attacking player that could really add to our style of play. He's very much more of a Rodgers guy, likes to take guys on, is quite direct. And because of his age and he's not, he's not Cherky profile, transfer fee and whatever, is probably going to be on the menu for us. It's hard to imagine forwards really beyond somebody like a Bradley Barcola, somebody that could come in because and our team's trying to sell somebody. Because so many of those big clubs now just want to loan players out. And I don't think we're really in that loan market without the option to buy. Let me know your thoughts and feelings on my suggestions. I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks a lot and I'll catch you on the next one. Hail, hail.